Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. So today's the day I'm gonna be showing you how to do the real old school pattern grading. So that you can grade a single pattern up as many sizes as you want and down as many sizes as you want. Now these days in the fashion industry, nobody does it by hand. It's all done on computers. But knowing how to do it by hand is fantastic for anybody that runs a small business and doesn't have access to that kind of computer technology. And you know what? It's really not that hard to do it by hand. It does take some patience and accuracy and you have to know the process. So that's what I'm going to show you today. It's kind of a fun process. I kind of like doing it. And in fact, my very first job in the fashion industry on my first day at this new job, they handed me a trench coat pattern with so many pattern pieces and I had to take it from the 10 down to a four and up to a 16. It took forever, but it's a great skill to know and you'll probably find it really, really useful. The pattern that I'm gonna be grading is the pajama pattern that I made a few videos back. You can check out that video if you like, um, but once you have any pattern, you get to decide what the increments between your sizes are. And I'm gonna show you sort of industry standard, what those sizes would look like but I've had situations where I've made a pattern for myself and then I've had two students that want to make one like it, but one's smaller than me and one's bigger than me. So I just called mine the medium, graded down to the smaller student size, called that the small, graded up to the larger student size and called that the large. So really sizing is arbitrary, right? It really is up to the designer and the brand to set their own size increments, but I'll show you some industry standards so that you can decide how big you want each of your sizes to be. So to do pattern grading, as with any pattern drafting, you'll need some paper and you'll need a couple of good rulers. These are my favorite rulers, they are my go-to, and really, to me, they're the only rulers you need to buy, but I do highly recommend that you do buy them if you're gonna be doing any pattern drafting at all. So I'll put the links to these below in the description. It's just a see-through ruler and the very form hip curve ruler. Just those two rulers and a sharp pencil, some paper, you're good to go. And as always, if you learned something from today's video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe because that helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. But if you've got all that together, then let's just jump right in. Okay, so here is a standard size chart and honestly, I just found this one on Wikipedia, but I'll put a link to it below, but there's many size charts there for children, women, men, many different size charts are there. But this one looked to me to be pretty standard for the lower sizes, the smaller sizes, the increments are one inch per size. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So they're one inch apart up to size 10. After that, they move up to one and a half inches. And this is for all the measurements, right? These ones are all an inch apart. And then these ones go up an inch and a half, and then an inch and a half to the 14, and then an inch and a half to the 16. After the 16, then it's two inch increments. Now you don't necessarily have to do all the sizes. It's completely up to you for whatever your product is. You could call the two an extra small and just do that. You could skip the four and call the six a small, skip the eight and call the 10 a medium, skip the 12 and call the 14 a large, skip the 16 and call the 18 extra large. So that means half as much grading. If you're doing something soft and stretchy and comfortable, like, like what I'm doing, the pajamas, we, it just doesn't make sense to have sizes that are just one inch apart. It's such a small difference why not just do the extra small, small, medium, etc.? When I'm pattern grading, I always start with just a small little sketch of each piece and plan where I'm going to put each little increment so that all the pattern pieces still fit together. So I'm going to be doing two inches in between my sizes and that's two inches of the whole circumference. So once I know how much I'm going to be putting into my whole circumference, then I draw a little sketch like this. And I'll just take you through that process of what does that all mean? This is the front and back of a, of a bodice or this is my pajama top, the sleeve, and this is the front and back of a pair of little pajama shorts. 
the pattern pieces are not the same. I do have a separate front and back, but the grading is going to be the same on all of them. The same with the shorts. The, I do have a separate front and back pattern piece, but the grading is going to be the same. So I know I want two inches. That's in the whole circumference. But you've got side seams, you've got a center front and a center back seam. So that two inches gets divided into four separate panels or quadrants. Do you see what I mean? So into each of these sections, I'll just be putting in half an inch total. I'll be making those each half an inch bigger. Understand that? Okay, good. Alrighty. So on the front, I'm going to be putting in half an inch in width. But that same half inch, I need to divide between whatever is horizontal up here. So I'm going to take half of that and put a quarter inch up here. I'll put an eighth in the neck there and an eighth in the underarm here. Good? Alrighty. Now I'm also going to be putting... I want to make this a bit longer too, so I'll put another eighth in there and put an eighth over here. I want the body to be a total of a half inch longer too. I've already used up an eighth of an inch on the vertical here, so this will be three eighths longer here. So on the sleeve here, I know I'm putting an eighth and an eighth. So I'll put an eighth in both of the little horizontal sections and then another eighth where it becomes a bit more vertical. So that's a total at the bottom here. That's a total of a quarter, half an inch. On the shorts, again, I want a half inch total, but I'm going to divide that here and here where it's a bit horizontal. So I'll do a quarter inch there and a quarter inch here. And then the length, I'll make a half inch difference in the length. And so I'll divide that as well, a quarter inch here and a quarter inch on the little inseam. When you do your sketch, you have to think about the balance here, that this half inch is a total of the vertical increments at the top. So this is an eighth plus a quarter plus an eighth. That adds up to a half inch, it balances this one. These two eighths balance each other and these three eighths balance each other. So do you see what I mean that it's balanced, right? The vertical ones add up together and the horizontal ones add up together. Make sense? Good. I'll grade up first to show you that and then I'll grade down. When I'm grading, I always have my piece sideways in front of me. So this is my pajama shorts. So the first thing I want is to create what they call point zero. To create this point zero, I want to find a spot on this edge that's closer to me and I want that line to come out. I can draw the line straight across, but I don't really need to. I just need a little bit on both ends here. And then I want to mark the edge of my pattern piece. And then I have to move that away now. I'm going to be drawing a little grid here. I don't think you'll see that very well, right? So I think I will switch to a Sharpie. Where that line intersects, this right here, is point zero okay it's where you're starting and where you're ending so this pencil line is going to be going around the grid I'm going to creating and it's going to end up back at point zero all right so now I need to look back at my little sketch here the first step I'll be doing is going out this one quarter I'll come down a quarter out a quarter down a quarter back a half and up a half. I know that might sound confusing, but I'll just show you how, how that's done. It's really not difficult, but it can be confusing. This is why these see-through rulers are so handy. I can just lay my quarter inch line on top of that first line. There's my point out a quarter. Then I wanna go down a quarter. And for these horizontal ones, I also wanna draw them over here. Good. So out a quarter, down a quarter, out another quarter, and down another quarter. And then I'll be coming back in the half and up the half. So that's how I'll be ending up back at point zero. Okay, good. So with my sketch in mind here, I'm just going to be able to trace this pattern piece right up to this corner. Good. And 
it is easier for sure it's easier if your original pattern piece is on a hard paper like a cardstock it is easier but we'll manage just fine now I'm going to slide this out that quarter inch and I want that to be right there and I want to make sure I haven't come off there right this little tick has to be with that upper line there oh I forgot to do the didn't I oh dearie okay now I'm ready to start so I did that trace that upper corner now I'm going to slide out to that first quarter inch mark and make sure I'm staying parallel here this little tick here has to line up with that top line and then I'm just going to trace the corner over here and now on my sketch I plan to go down a quarter and then out a quarter so first we'll just go down the quarter and I'll trace a little bit in here and then out a quarter and make sure I am now lined up with that middle line and then I can trace this whole curve Good. and then on my sketch I know I want to go down a quarter here down a quarter now I'm lined up with that bottom line on both edges and then I will trace this corner good okay and then it's half an inch here at the bottom so I'm just gonna slide right back to my half inch so I'm back to my original line over here trace this corner good and then I've got half an inch here so if I come back up that half inch I'm back to point zero so I know I've done it right when I'm back to point zero good so what you you end up with is a shape like that you've got all of your corners marked and now you can just use your pattern piece or a ruler to connect all of those sections if it's a straight edge and you're working with soft paper better to use your ruler to connect if it's a curved edge and if you're working with hard paper you can just use your pattern piece kind of split the difference not that great to be working with a soft paper and a sharpie you'll be much more accurate if you're using a hard paper and a sharp pencil so here you'll see what I mean about splitting the difference right I don't want to have that corner right up to this edge or to this edge I'll put it right in between and then that shows me where that curve is going to be so then I can use my curved ruler to make that a little bit neater I can fold this one right along its grain line so that I can duplicate the grain line as well. Good. So now I'm going to call this one the medium, this one the large. Good. Oh, the other thing I need is my notches. Once I have all my sizes done, I would lay them on top of each other here, line up point zero and see that they're all getting bigger in those equal increments. So now to grade down, it's a similar process, but it's a little bit confusing. I think one confusing thing is that when we're grading up, making it bigger, our lines are going in. And so it kind of feels like you're making it smaller, but you're not, you're sliding that edge out. When you're grading down making this smaller your lines are going to be coming out so again it's going to sort of feel like you're making it bigger but you're not because you're bringing that edge in make sense okay first we make a point zero so there's this and this and then where this edge crosses that's point zero again i'll start at this corner i'm going to bring it back towards me a quarter inch now this one, I want to bring it up to shorten this section, right? I'm going to bring it up, quarter inch up there, and I need that line over here as well. In another quarter inch, up another quarter inch. And then I'll be coming back out the half inch and down the half inch, and I'll end up back at point zero. Good. Okay, so I start at point zero line myself up here good I'll draw in this whole first corner 
Okay, so we're making it smaller, so I'm bringing it back towards me, and I'll draw the second corner. Now I want to shorten this section by a quarter inch, bring that up. And I'll draw the middle section here. And then I want to shorten this up a bit, draw, pull that toward me the quarter inch. And come around that corner. Good. This little bit gets made shorter by a quarter inch, so I'll slide it up. Make sure I'm still parallel. And the little bottom corner here. And then this whole thing needs to become skinnier by half inch. So I want to bring this edge toward that one half an inch. Make sure I'm still parallel. Good. Draw this corner. And then this edge gets shorter by a half inch. So I want to bring this edge toward that one now. Down the half inch. And there I am back at point zero. Good. Good. So that's the process. Then I'll just fill in the gaps. Duplicate my grain line. And this is now the small pajama shorts. So I would do the exact same process on the back grading up and grading down. Okay, so we'll be doing the t-shirt back now. Hopefully you're kind of getting the process, but I do want to show you a bodice piece because it's a little more complex. There's just more shifts because of the armhole and the neck and the shoulder. So I do want to take you through this, but we start off exactly the same in the edge of my pattern piece there. Move this out of the way so that I can extend these lines. A perpendicular line coming right across where the edge of my pattern piece was, and that's my point zero. I'm going to be drawing that first corner, and then I'm gonna to want to go out an eighth. Good, and then I'll be going up an eighth. And those are both just increments to enlarge the armhole. Good. So up the eighth, now out a quarter. That enlarges the shoulder, the shoulder seam, out a quarter. Then I'll be coming down that eighth, the same eighth that I went up, I'll be coming down the eighth, so I don't have to draw that in, but then out another eighth. Then I'm coming down three eighths to lengthen the whole center back edge down three eighths from point zero and then I'll be coming back half an inch up three eighths and that'll bring me back to point zero confusing right but it does it does make sense basically what you're doing is you're kind of just shifting this around in a circle and tracing the corners as you go so starting at point zero I want to trace this first corner and then go out an eighth. Make sure I'm still parallel. That just gets me this center part. It doesn't get me the whole armhole. Then I go up an eighth. Around this corner, out a quarter. Out a quarter and complete this corner. So now I'm coming back down that same eighth. So I'll be just coming back down to that line. It just gets me to the halfway point. And then I'm going out an eighth. Now I can get that corner. And then this one is down 3 eighths, so that takes me down to my bottom line. And that's a whole straight edge, so I'll just get that with the ruler later. Good, and then back in a half inch. There we go. Slide that right back. Still parallel. Get that corner. Good. And then back up the 3 eighths and that brings me back to point zero. This is now going to be called the medium. You just need to fill in your gaps, same way, kind of, instead of having that corner right in there, split the difference and either use your curved ruler or the pattern piece itself to fill in all of those gaps. 
Use your straight ruler if it is a straight section. Okay, I guess there is one more ruler that I use occasionally. A metal meter stick or yard stick is handy when you have a long edge. So now I graded this one up, so now this is my large t-shirt back and it is place on fold. I would do the same process of grading down, so I don't think I need to take you through that process. Your lines just come this way, right? When you're grading down, you're coming out because you're compressing the whole thing. Think of it that way, you're bringing it out that way. Think of compressing, so if you're making this shorter, you're bringing it down. Make sense? I hope that's clear, but if you do want me to take you through that process of grading down on the shirt, if this hasn't been clear so far, just leave me a comment and I can do a part two. But before you go, I'm going to show you the sleeve. This sleeve is symmetrical, so I really could probably get away with folding it in half and just doing half. But most sleeves are not symmetrical, especially on a more fitted garment. Here's my sketch, but I forgot I'm, I will also be coming down, let's say, half an inch. And that's a decision you need to make if you want it to be just a quarter there or whatever you want. It's just a short sleeve. It could just do a quarter inch difference. As long as you have the same on both sides. So I've got an eighth going into each section of the curves here and then a half inch going into the length. All right so to create my point zero here I want to have a line going right across this and I'm perpendicular to the grain line. There's the edge of my pattern piece. I'll move that out of the way. Extend my lines in. My little perpendicular line here, that's my point zero. Good. I'll be going out an eighth four times. Two, three, four. So there, that's my four increments going out, and then I'll come down a half. So my half inch line goes on to my original line. This isn't accurate, is it? Like when you're using your Sharpie, your lines get so fat that this is actually bigger than a half inch, but this is all for the purposes of demonstration. I'll come back a half and up a half. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to mark the first corner. Good, and then go out an eighth. That just gives me the next section. Out another eighth to do the top edge or the, the center and I'll mark my notch there out another eighth eek my line is barely long enough to do the center here and out my final eighth to get that last quarter and then I'll drop it down the half inch keeping this along that same line though Good. Good. Now if this was very curvy, I could come back an eighth of an inch at a time and mark each section, but it's really not that curvy, so I'll just do it all in one. There's my final quarter. So now, same thing, just use your pattern piece, kind of split the difference. So not this line my grain line okay and then this now is going to be called the medium this is the small and <laughs> whoops nope that's not the small it's the large i went bigger didn't i see what i mean it's confusing okay so that's it that's the process and i hope you did find that helpful thank you so much for joining me as always and thanks for subscribing and if you didn't subscribe already do it now thanks so much and until next time you take care